Welcome to Falling in Love with Testing, again, the show where we transform your questions about testing heartbreaks into quality conversations. I'm Tristan Lombard, Director of Community at ProBar, and today I'm sitting with testing love Dr. Walton, a recovering automation developer, self-proclaimed, but whoever really recovers from those 2 a.m. regression tests. It's true. The theme of today's show, y'all, is how to fall in love with testing again, as well as pragmatic solutions to bring back a more holistic approach to your testing practices for your teams. But before we take your questions, I want to introduce you to an automation developer that needs no introduction, our main guest this evening, testing love Dr. Walton. For those of you that don't know our amazing doctor here, they have nearly a decade of experience in test automation development, writing test cases, debating the story scope, I see you, and being the bottleneck. <laughs> Cute laugh track. Such <laughs> a struggle. Too soon. Too, too soon. Too soon. Mm. She stumbled into QA after going to a school for a degree in software development and did a fair bit of troubleshooting as a TA in college. Tara spends her free time reading romance novels and Reddit and completing RCA on both failed sprints and relationships. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it turns out that I'm pretty good at breaking things and thinking about things from a different perspective. Uh, sometimes it helps to wear the tiara. Mm, we see you, Queen. So sometimes when your brittle test got you down, you better fix that crown. That's all it takes. A little mm. bit of sparkle in your life. Mm. Thank you for being with us this evening, testing love, Dr. Walton. And we have a lot of great questions coming in from our followers. And in the theme of the spirit of this show, falling in love with testing again, we thought, who better than the original doctor themselves? Are you ready for some questions? I'll do what I can, Tristan. Okay, okay. I know, not a miracle worker. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> um, so let's dive into the first question. And this one's coming in from Lakshmi. Thanks for this question, Lakshmi. Lakshmi wants to know, you know, they're saying, Doctor, I've been in QA for years now, and I was wondering, what testing relationship advice do you have to help devs fall in love with writing their first unit test and testing in general? And that's a great question, Lakshmi. Oh, that is a good question. Um, well, let's start by remembering that QA doesn't just mean testing. Mm. It means quality assurance, right? And it doesn't start when development's done. It starts the moment a team sits down to groom stories, decides how to tackle business goals. QA leaders can help software development run a little bit smoother by identifying the potential issues and help identify the tests that would help catch most mistakes early on. Mm. We can be a part of the conversation earlier, uh, identify sticky situations, avoid some bugs, and mm. plan ahead instead of react to these scenarios. If you desire to do a little bit of code, too, you can sit down and pair a program with your devs. See if you can tackle the problem together. We are a little bit around collaboration, and I really, really appreciate that. But it's not easy. Never is. And, you know, to quote our Marley Cyrus, <laughs> it's the climb. So if you want to <laughs> climb together with uh, our testing love, Dr. Walton, definitely check out her fictional book that doesn't actually exist in real life online. I'm working on it. I'll get it written eventually. Oh, talk to the publishers. <laughs> so this next question, y'all. Oh, this one breaks my heart. Oh, I don't know if we're ready for this All one, right. y'all. Okay. I'm going to prepare myself. Okay, okay, okay. Enrique says, I'm a QA lead on a small and under-resourced team, definitely on the point of burnout and falling out of love with testing. Help! No. Oh, Enrique, I feel you. It's a great question because we have all been there. Mm. For me, it was community that saved me. I kept finding new facets of QA and absolutely brilliant voices in the community to help remind me of the things that I loved in QA and testing to begin with. Oh, I, I got so burnt out that I know that I thought, oh my gosh, if I write one more test case, and then there was the days where you wake up and go, this cannot be my life. This really, really? When I started reaching out to my community, though, I found out I was not the only person that felt that way. I found leaders that helped me reframe my own experiences and start to enjoy testing again. Great response, Doctor. Wow. And Enrique, uh, you're not alone, friend. You're not alone. And burnout is real, especially during this global panini. And so I will say for anyone who is watching this recording with our testing love, Dr. Walden, let us know in the comments below, what are some of those testing communities that help bring you back to life? And what are some burnout strategies that can help you get back on track? Now that said, are you ready for another question, Doctor? 
Bring it on. Let's do it. Okay. Well, that's why we brought you on the show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> VIP. This next question is coming in from Logan. Logan says, I'm a product owner for a SaaS tool, and I've noticed that my QA team is a bit disconnected from the business requirements. How can I, as a PO, help get my team back on track? Oof. That happens so often, and I love that you asked the question. I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, if you've read our, this book from our friend Pradeep, Guys, I carry this thing around with me. It's my Bible. Um, he refers to two different types of testers, right? The tech savvy and the business savvy. And most QA members are going to fall into the tech savvy side. We read code. We're comfortable with it. We check the requirements. Um, but it's really the product owners that can help balance that out. You're the business savvy side that we need to balance everything. I've always appreciated when my PO uh, is just transparent, helps me identify the impact of different features and stories. Uh, communication's always the key in any good relationship. That said, QA specialists and teams are all unique, right? So when in doubt, ask your QA how they're doing, what passions they have. The answers might surprise you and the business too, in a good way. Oh, in a good way. <laughs> Am I right? In a good way. And may I, doctor? Oh, thank you. And so for anyone that is watching, we want to just say as well, in the spirit of our show, falling in love with testing, again, we're always celebrating amazing leaders and resources like our Pradeepian. So please let us know what advice you have for testing love Dr. Walton in the comments below for a chance to win one of our many books, including from Pradeep. So, can I have my book back though? Okay. When you write one, just kidding. <laughs> we'll talk about this offline. So, um, I want to get to the next question. Oh, and this one's from Anonymous. Okay. Ooh, scandalous. I believe a fool <laughs> with a tool is still a fool. Ooh, spicy. And yet, I keep on falling in love with new tools. Any tooling advice, Tester Love, Dr. Walton, Anonymous? Well, like any relationship, don't fall in love with a tool, right? There's always a honeymoon phase. And when everything is new and amazing, it's shiny, right? Mm. But what happens when that wears off? Do you start to question what you can accomplish together? Mm -hmm. um, do you just become an old habit? Mm. Right? No. Don't fall in love with the tool. Fall in love with the community around the tool. If you can't see it, stand to be around your partners, friends, and family. Do you stick around with them? Think of the tools the same way. If you don't have the community to be a part of, find the support and make connections, why not just find another tool? Wait, okay, 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 okay. You can have your book back, I guess. So, yes, doctor, and I'm sorry, and you are the expert here. So I wanna, I wanna respect the crown. <laughs> mm, heavy is the crown. No. No? This one's great. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but she, I will say though that like let's 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 be honest here. And for anyone who's watching, like we've all done a little backsliding. Like, get, Kristen, keep of it course, real. of course, we've all backslid. But there's one rule that you should keep in mind. Mm. Um, if you're going to fall in love with the tool, make sure it has the flexibility you need. You don't have to write every single line of code, and you don't have to rely on a UI. Give yourself the room you need to be you. Such a great response. You know, be true, be true, be true, be you, be curious. I love that. So, and lastly, testing love, Dr. Walton. I know you have many tricks up your sleeves, although you're not wearing sleeves today. Hmm. Um, I know that you also have a surprise for our followers. What is that surprise? It's amazing. We're so excited to announce the launch of our Provar Customer Community Forum. By joining, our customers will have exclusive access to benefits like our Provar Product Group. This is a program that gives our customers a virtual seat at the table to connect with devs and product leaders, while gaining early access to beta programs before GA. We've also got a treasure trove of new custom APIs created for you guys by our Provar team. The forum has become a great opportunity to build real connections with other customers. What wouldn't be community if we didn't have opportunities to win a few prizes and swag as well? It's just fun, y'all. You know, we're entering into another year and we just figured let's give back 
Um, we love our customers so much. And it's not even just as much as we love our customers, we also believe in giving back to the community in general, right? And so in addition to the amazing resources that we're putting out there and having a mechanism in place for y'all, our VIP customers to connect with each other, we are also continuing to have new community programs for anyone, including our new meetup group. We can't tell you yet, but maybe you'll see in the comments. And in addition to that, we are also have, having other resources for y'all as well, including our University of Provar, which is an amazing place for anyone to up-level their skills, become Provar certified, as well as take additional courses. I want to say as well, oh, doctor, you know, I was worried I was falling in love, out of love with testing again as well, you know? Are you feeling inspired to fall back in love? Oh, I'm already in love. <laughs> <laughs> so from all of you online watching around the world, we want to say, please, please, please remember, take care of yourselves and come join us out in the community forum if you're a customer and please check out our meetup group. Also, please do check out um, University of Provar. You'll love it. Um, shout out to all of you devs and product owners as well as QA, solution architects and anyone who's a part of the Dubs delivery team. Y'all are doing the real work and inspiring everyone every day. And I'm going to go have a cocktail with this one offline. So we're overdue. Over. It's been so long. Uh, oh, you look great. Somebody just keeps pushing me to write a book, so I don't have time to have a drink anymore. Well, <laughs> we'll continue this offline. From all of us over here at the Falling in Love with Testing Again show, until next time, stay inspired, be you. We'll see you soon. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know. Oh. It's all about